Hi everyone, so today I want to do another voiceover video and we are going to be discussing Grand Duchess Anastasia. We're all familiar with the auburn-haired beauty drawn up by 20th Century Fox, the orphan girl rescued by a young boy at the height of an attack on her family's palace. The animated movie Anastasia was released in 1997 and has since become a childhood classic for a generation of children. We grew up watching Anya slowly transform into the missing Grand Duchess. We cheered as she fell in love with Dimitri and hid our eyes when the menacing Rasputin appeared on screen in an eerie green hue. For many of us, this story was the first time we dipped our feet into the subject of history, marveling as our parents told us the true story. There had once been a powerful Romanov family that was murdered, but the remains of the youngest daughter had never been found. And as young kids, we hoped that Anastasia would one day remember who she was, that this real princess would get the happily ever after awarded to her fictional counterpart. In 2007, the final two remains of the Romanov family, who were murdered in 1918 during the Russian Revolution, were found in a Siberian forest. The state of their bodies were consistent with the executioner's notes and were then confirmed to be the Romanovs via DNA testing. With that case closed and any chance of the Grand Duchess or any of her family members surviving their basement room assassination in the Apatiev house, the real story becomes inherently more interesting. Who was Anastasia? What is the story behind those ghost-like characters who danced along to the iconic Once Upon a December? Anastasia was born the youngest daughter and fourth child of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, on June 18, 1901. While her parents had been hoping for her son and heir, they loved their little Anastasia. She was named for Saint Anastasia of the Russian Orthodox Church, the saint known as the Breaker of Chains, a fitting title as Anastasia broke nearly every rule set in order to chain her to the idea of what an imperial daughter should have been. Even when Anastasia was a small child, her personality was larger than the Alexander Palace itself. She was best friends with her big sister Maria with whom she was fondly referred to as the Big Pair, in contrast to her older sisters Olga and Tatiana, who were the Big Pair. The four were close, but so incredibly different. Unlike the introspective Olga, the dutiful Tatiana, and the loving Maria, Anastasia was referred to as Schwipsig, meaning little mischief in German. She did the same needlework, the same chores and academics as her three sisters, but she desired something far more fun than listening to tutors lecture for hours. She had a knack for comedy, often performing little skits with her sisters. Her personality, though fun-loving and entertaining, was not always charming to the people around her. As a small child, she was known to be a bit of a brat, her will too strong to be held back by her English Victorian nannies. She would climb trees and hide away in cupboards and refuse orders. She was a master at pranks and naughtiness, the blue-eyed, strawberry-blonde-haired little girl dissolving into fits of giggles as she tripped servants and her siblings. She was not always the ideal playmate for other children, even noted by some of her cousins as being nasty to the point of being evil. Anna Verubova notes of an instance in her memoirs where Anastasia played a bit too rough with her sisters. The four sisters had been having a snowball fight in the yards of their Polish palace when Anastasia knocked Tatiana to the ground with a snowball full of rocks. When her little brother, Tsarevich Alexei, was born, the family and country rejoiced. Russia remained one of the only monarchies at the time to refuse women the throne. Because of the Salic law that was put into place, the fact that Tsar Nicholas already had four daughters meant little to nothing for the Romanov line of succession. The birth of a little boy in 1904 meant that the Tsarina had fulfilled her duties as empress, and that the four sisters had a little one to dote on. When it was discovered that their baby brother was sick, that he had the dreaded hemophilia, the four young girls became even more protective of the boy. They kept a close eye on him, sitting by his bedside when he was sick, and writing letters when they were not permitted to visit. Despite his sickness that often left him bedridden, Alexei was vivacious, a curious boy, and who better to be his partner in crime than his big sister, Schwipsig, seated on the far right? The two of them were incredibly close, the absolute best of friends, and together they no doubt ran their governesses ragged. As Anastasia aged to the 17-year-old that she would forever be frozen as, she mellowed out some. She still enjoyed making people laugh, 
and still pushed the boundaries of what was allowed. For example, during the family's time under house arrest, Anastasia was nearly shot for peering out a window and then stuck her tongue out at the guard who had fired at her. She went from playing silly pranks and sticking pins on the chairs of her tutors to becoming the relief that her family desperately needed. One can hardly imagine what it must have been like for the teenage girl locked up with her future in constant danger. She and her family had no clue what awaited them. They did not know if they'd ever be allowed outside for more than an hour under guard ever again. They had no clue if they'd be allowed to see their friends, to dance, paint, sing, or any of the other number of activities they'd so loved prior to the Russian Revolution. Anastasia, determined to maintain her status as the joy of the family, must have felt an enormous weight on her small shoulders. How was she to make her father, who had lost his kingdom, laugh? Her eldest sister, Olga, who was becoming thinner and more depressed with each passing day, how was she to bring a smile back to her face? Her brother, who was in agonizing pain, her mother, who was suffering from her own ailments, could she make things better for them? We will never know if Anastasia was able to accomplish these goals, but we can hope. We can hope for this Anastasia, the real girl with messy hair and skinned knees, who lost her life before it truly began just as we hoped for the animated princess of our adolescence. Thank you so much to everyone who watched and listened to this video. All of the photos used in the video were colored by me, and if you would like to see more, I will have my Instagram link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks so much!